My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're once again going to look at how do I lower DHEA levels. We're going to focus on the role of sex hormones and how they feed back to inhibit things, which then raise DHEA levels. So we're going to look at the role of estrogen, testosterone, and to help you better understand what's going on in your body so that you can get your DHEA levels down and your overall hormone levels balanced. So if this is something that interests you, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like it. Last time we, we talked about the role of a specific enzyme, 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, on DHEA levels. This time we're going to further that discussion, but look at it from the hormonal feedback loops and how those different hormone levels can feed back and affect that enzyme and ultimately influence your DHEA level. So when we talk about hormone levels, we're mainly talking about the activity of the hormones on the receptor sites. So the main two receptors that we're going to talk about here are the androgen receptors and estrogen receptors. So both high amount of activity at the androgen receptor and the estrogen receptor will downregulate the enzyme 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, which cuts off or reduces, uh, it's, a, it's not a light switch, it's more of a dimmer switch, and it's going to reduce the ability of your body to convert that DHEA into androstenedione and other androgen. Therefore, if you have a really high DHEA sulfate level, you should be checking your testosterone, estradiol, and other estrogens to gauge the relative abundance of the binding to the estrogen receptor. Now, E2 is the main hormone, or estradiol is the main hormone that will activate the estrogen receptor, but there are other types of estrogen, so sometimes looking at the total estrogens in one's body may be also pertinent when it comes to something like this. So if the total amount of androgens and estrogens, uh, androgens being testosterone mainly, uh, but there are other metabolites of testosterone that may be worthwhile looking at as well. If all those are high, including the estrogens, uh, then you would want to focus on the clearance of these molecules. Basically, you're going to try and enhance your detoxification systems. It's important to keep in mind, though, especially Especially with estrogen in females, what may look high at one point in your monthly cycle may look low at another point. And so the highs and lows for estrogen vary based on the time of your cycle. So you wouldn't want to just look at the number and get, get a hard uh, outcome. You need to look and see what the numbers are relative to where you're at in your cycle. Is it ovulation? Is it the luteal phase? Is it follicular phase? Or something else. So that can get a little tricky, uh, so I'm not going to go into that here, uh, but there will be another video on lab testing and looking at, uh, at some of these things in a little more detail. So how you interpret these lab results may require uh, some expertise from someone that looks at hormone levels on a regular basis. Now, if we decide that the overall levels are high, that means we're going to want to help you eliminate some of these hormones like the estrogens and, and testosterone. So how are these typically cleared? Well, testosterone does get converted into estrogen and dihydrotestosterone. And so one focus might be on lowering estrogen levels. It wouldn't be uncommon for a scenario like this where you have high estrogen for there to be uh, estrogen dominance. And in these uh, cases where there is excess estrogen, you do want to clear some of that estrogen so you know there's not as much uh, of this feedback loop occurring, which then can also increase your overall androgen levels, almost like a compensating mechanism. So in order to for your body to clear estrogens, there's two main pathways that's going to occur, uh, sulfation and glucuronidation. If you're going to take this approach, you have to make sure you actually are high. And so sometimes we'll check on multiple points depending on how the clinical uh, presentation is. If it seems clear that your estrogen levels are high, one approach is to take something that helps enhance glucuronidation, which is a process by which uh, a uh, which is a process by which a glucurate molecule is put on estrogen or other toxins, and it helps it uh, get excreted from the body through the urine and the, and the digestive tract. So all these detoxifications are called, you know, conjugation, where it basically gets pasted on there, so it helps it get out of the body easier. So you can enhance glucuronidation by taking calcium d glucurate and you can enhance sulfation by adding more cysteine into your system, like N-acetylcysteine, for instance. The relative dose and frequency of this would really depend on the clinical picture, so you'd have to, you know, get a, get a a better understanding from someone that works with hormones to help you with that. So if your overall hormone levels are normal, maybe you just have a high free testosterone or high normal testosterone and high free testosterone, then uh, the focus may be more on 
uh, lowering sex hormone binding globulin. So in general, sex hormone binding globulin goes down when the overall anabolic signal hormones and things like that overweigh the catabolic signal. So anabolic signals are things like testosterone, insulin, and insulin-like growth factor and things like this. So when you're overweight, oftentimes there is more insulin resistance and more insulin in your body. If not now, there probably was at some point. And it does take a while for that insulin to kind of wash out and that effect to shift. When your body is flooded with more of these anabolic signals, it means your sex hormone binding globulin will be lower. And lower sex hormone binding globulin means more free testosterone. So the binding globulin basically binds up the different hormones so they can't bind to that receptor and then have that effect, which then downregulates the activity of 3-beta-hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase. The overall role here, if you have high free testosterone but everything else looks normal, is going to be to drive down that sex hormone binding globulin the best you can. And the main way you're going to do that is typically through reducing insulin. There are other ways uh, to approach that, but that's uh, one of the main things. Now, keep in mind, these things are in a dynamic balance. They're not sort of static, and it's not a light switch kind of thing. There's all these molecules floating around binding to the receptors, and depending on what else is going on in your body, you may have a relative excess or a relative deficiency, and that can balance out, but it's when it's way over the top that things start to shift and you see these abnormal levels in your blood like high DHEA sulfate levels. So when you have these excess signals going on where you're seeing high DHEA levels, you may have to stay after and be really consistent and persistent in your efforts to change these signals before you actually see the benefit of it. Along the way, when you're making the changes to affect this in a positive way, you may not see the results for two months, three months, four months, but as, as you keep after it, there should be a steady improvement in these. The DHEA levels will also show you the benefit, but looking at these other signals will help you understand whether or not you're getting better in a linear way and what you need to do to actually continue to make progress. So also wanted to note when you're looking at sex hormone binding globulin, something as simple as being in a fed or fasted state when you check your levels and even being uh, having changes to your thyroid can affect that number as well. So it's important not to overinterpret any one result, but consistently seeing changes in your lab results or a consistent pattern. That's how you know when you need to act and, and act on something. There is a separate video on sex hormone binding globulin, highs and lows, uh, if you want to check those out as well. So another thing to look at and understand is it's the overall stimulation to the androgen and estrogen receptors that has this effect on downregulating that 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase that's then going to raise your DHEA. So another thing to consider is the fact that DHT or dihydrotestosterone is somewhere around 10 times as strong as actual testosterone. So if you ha if you have a you know relatively normal testosterone you may have a really much higher dihydrotestosterone. The conversion of testosterone into that dihydrotestosterone occurs through it via an enzyme, alpha-5 reductase. Sometimes women with PCOS and other issues related to PCOS and, and high DHEA sulfate levels will have low progesterone. This same kind of theme of estrogen dominance. Sometimes it's just not enough progesterone. Sometimes it's also uh, on top of that or instead of just an excess estrogen. So when you have decreased progesterone, you don't have as much uh, regulation of that alpha-5 reductase enzyme. And so therefore you get more, potentially more of that dihydrotestosterone, more stimulation of the androgen receptor. And because of that decreased 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase and higher amounts of DHEA. So it's just this basically feedback, feedback, feedback. And you know that's something to consider as well as if your progesterone levels are low, again, you have to check them at certain times and gauge whether or not it's low or high. But when that's occurring, that may be something to consider as a therapy or a therapeutic avenue to get your DHEA levels more in check. Now, keep in mind that there's multiple layers of feedback going on here with hormones. So any one uh, feedback loop may be influencing your body's ability to convert the DHEA and sulfate into other things, 
more than another one. But that's why it's also important to consult with your doctor because you may be missing piece of the puzzle in some way, shape, or form. And so it's always important to keep the broader uh, scope of what's going on hormonally to make sure you're not missing anything. So that way you'll always stay safe and make sure you're not doing yourself any harm. Okay, that will conclude this video on how do I lower DHEA levels, looking at sex hormones and the enzyme 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Hopefully you liked the video. If you did, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have comments, questions about this topic or other topic, drop it in the comment section and I may do a separate video on that if it seems like there's enough interest. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.